In 1901, Portland Archbishop Alexander Christie set out to build a school that would offer opportunities for higher education unequaled by any other on the Pacific Coast. Its beginnings were humble. Columbia University opened its doors with 52 boys, eight teachers, and a single building. Christie soon convinced Father John Zahm, the provincial superior of the Congregation of Holy Cross, to take ownership so that the priests and brothers could share the Holy Cross model of education, an education in which the hands and heart are as engaged as the mind. Columbia became a full-fledged university in the 1920s, and an ambitious building campaign at that time yielded Howard Hall. But soon the Great Depression hit, and to combat declining enrollment, Columbia joined forces with St. Vincent Hospital School of Nursing in 1934. A year later, the business school opened, and Columbia University changed its name to University of Portland, forever tying the university to the city it calls home. The university expanded again following World War II thanks to the GI Bill, and the schools of engineering and graduate studies opened. But expenses were rising across campus, so two controversial measures were taken, cutting the football program in 1950 and, in the spring of 1951, opening all of the university's programs to women. The first women's dormitory was finally built in 1957, on the condition that it be located as far from the men as possible. And over the next 10 years, the university would add seven student residences, a new commons, and a library. The 1960s saw the School of Nursing's move to the Bluff, the founding of the School of Education, the merging of the College of Arts and Sciences, and at the urging of President Father Paul Waldschmidt, the establishment of the Salzburg Study Abroad Program. In the 1980s, under the leadership of Father Thomas Odo, two long-held dreams were realized. The Child Center opened and was hailed as a window to the university, and the Chapel of Christ the Teacher was constructed. Father David Tyson took the helm in 1990, and his visionary leadership took the university from a quiet school in North Portland to a player on the national stage, beginning 25 years of growth unmatched in the university's history. Under his leadership, the Defining Moment campaign raised $116 million, built and renovated seven buildings, and endowed five professorial chairs. The university attracted record numbers of students, had professors named the best in Oregon and the nation, and won its first NCAA national championship. During the 10 years of Father Bill Beauchamp's presidency, which began in 2004, the university won its second women's soccer championship, built and renovated 12 buildings and structures, attracted even more students, raised $182 million during the RISE campaign, and finally broke ground on a new recreation and wellness center. Today, we sit atop lists of the nation's best schools. Among our peers, we are a leader in student volunteerism, student Fulbright awards, percentage of students studying abroad, and Peace Corps volunteers. Our faculty are renowned scholars who receive prestigious research and teaching grants. We draw more than 11,000 applicants annually and enroll students from 44 states and 28 countries. We lead conversations about character and ethics, leadership, entrepreneurship and innovation, as well as the environment and social justice. As Father Mark Poorman becomes the 20th president, the University of Portland is poised to become a greater force in Portland, in Oregon, in the nation, and in the world. <laughs>